Hello, all! So today is the 30th anniversary of Nightmare on Elm Street 2, so I thought I'd make a video about it. Not only that, very recently Robert England, the actor who played Freddy Krueger in the Nightmare on Elm Street films, he did a very in-depth um, interview on Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, as well as the other films about the gay subtext that is in um, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, and arguably the other films, and he talked a really big in-depth interview it's extremely interesting i would highly suggest um reading it i'm going to link it in the description of this video it's a great read so i want to talk about that interview and i want to talk about nightmare on Elm street too because they're kind of interlinked um in the interview at the end of the interview he states how he how robert england feels the next nightmare on elm street film should be done because yes there's going to be another nightmare on elm street film it's one of those ongoing horror series that just never, never ends. Like Godzilla or Friday the 13th or Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It just keeps going and going and going. So he suggested how he thought the series should progress. And his suggestion was, if they're going to make another one, they should remake, in a sense, part two. And they should take the themes from part two and go the 110 with them. Go the whole nine yards with them. And if you don't know the themes from part two, well... Everybody and everyone's second cousin believes that um, part two has a very thick gay subtext. Now, apparently, the writer of the script meant for it to have big, thick gay subtext, but barely anyone else involved in the movie knew. Um, Robert England suggests he knew a bit, um, but a lot of people didn't know. So, personally, I don't think the subtext works too well, but I'll get into that a bit later. Anyways, Jesse, symbolic wise, could be considered gay. And the movie is supposedly revolves around that. Now, Robert England's suggestion was to take that theme and go the whole nine yards with it. Actually, stop it being a theme, make the main character actually gay, have the main character in the closet, and have the main character beat Freddy by coming out of the closet saying, I am gay, I'm proud, and that beats Freddy. Now, personally, I think this is a great idea. I've heard a lot of random ideas about what should be done with the next Freddy um, Krueger film and the next Nightmare on Elm Street. And this is definitely one of the better ones because it really fits with Nightmare on Elm Street and what the series is supposed to be and what Freddy is supposed to be and how it's supposed to work. It just makes a lot of sense. Now, for those of you that don't know anything about Nightmare on Elm Street, the plot is very simple. Freddy Krueger is a serial killer and very likely a child um, molester who was burned alive when he got off on a technicality in court. Um, and he comes back from the dead, still wanting to kill, still wanting to plague the world because he's an unstoppable evil force. He gets his revenge and just keeps killing by invading people's dreams. Um, and in said dreams, it's the dream world, so he's all-powerful and he can do whatever he wants. Um, and the interesting aspect of Freddy comes from the fact that he attacks people for what they fear. Um, so if you're afraid of heights, he'll use the dream world and dream logic to, to put you on a really high cliff. Or if you're afraid of spiders, he'll turn into a giant spider. He always attacks people with what they fear most, and he comes at them with their weakest elements. He, he takes what makes you you and turns yourself against you in these very creative, very brutal ways. And it's one of the things that makes the series so interesting because it forces the series to develop its characters, and at the same time gives us these really creative death scenes. So it, it's a win-win. Um, so, it's inevitable that if Freddy did bump into a gay character, he would use that against them. Because that's how Freddy works. Freddy takes whatever it makes you, you, and shoves it down your throat. That's how Freddy works. So, if he bumped into a gay character, he would do that. And Freddy's been killing for so long, it's inevitable that he would bump into a gay character. So, it just makes sense logic wise it just makes sense also the person coming out of the closet makes perfect sense for how to beat him freddy works based on fear so if you face your fears if you stop being afraid of them you beat them that's actually how he gets beat spoilers in the original film nancy stops being afraid of him and he literally goes away until the cheap jump scare ending so yeah a guy coming out of the closet might seem like a very simple way to beat him, but it makes sense given how Freddy works. 
Face your fears. He can't use them against you anymore, and he's powerless. So yes, that's how that scenario would play out if that scenario occurred, and it's kind of inevitable that Freddy would bump into that situation. I also like the concept because it kind of writes Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Even though a lot of the gay community loves the film, it's not necessarily a positive gay film. If Jesse is symbolic of being gay, um, well, that doesn't look too good because in the film, Freddy is possessing Jason, um, Jesse and using him to kill people. So what does that state? Also, um, this suggests that Freddy is the gay self, which looks bad. And not only that, Freddy, at the end of the movie, gets beat. He gets beat when Lisa, the main love interest, says, I love you to Jesse, and they kiss, and straight love beats him. So everyone's like, oh, this is such a great movie for the gay community, and... No, straight love literally saves the day at the end of the film. Yeah, Freddy jumps out for the last jump scare, but still, straight love saves the day, and it doesn't really work. Um, the reason why it doesn't really work is because it was made back in the 1980s, and as I mentioned earlier, half the people involved didn't know there was supposed to be a gay theme, so there is inconsistencies with it, and it doesn't really quite work in the film. And because it was made in the 1980s, you couldn't have gay characters and get your movie made. So in order to make this gay theme work, the scriptwriter put in gay coding. He, he put in gay stereotypes to get across the concept that the main character was supposed to be gay. Now, I get why he did this, but I'm still not down with coding. I don't think you should use stereotypes to make your point. Um, so the idea of taking those themes and kind of writing them have... Freddie Beaton at the end of the film, not with straight love, because that looks horrible, but have him beat with actually someone facing their fears and actually writing that end of the film just sounds like a great idea. Um, also, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is a pretty darn good film. If you're in the right state of mind and you give it a good go, it gets a lot more hate than it actually deserves. So a movie honoring it isn't that half of a bad idea either. So for all those reasons... I think it's a really good idea. I also, one of the things that I really like about horror and why I'm such a horror fan is because horror can tackle subjects and content that other genres wouldn't ever have the guts to ever touch. So horror should be able to talk about anything and everything. And yeah, horror should tackle this content just like it would tackle anything else. You got horror movies about rape and revenge and... and and um, online harassment and unfriended and all kinds of different subject matters. So why not this too? This is what horror does. It tackles on these big issues and forces you to talk about. And it, it tackles things other things can't tackle. Now all that's staying. Um, I think this idea could work for other aspects of the LGBTQ as well. Like, Freddy could go after a trans person, for example, and that would be really interesting. That, actually, I'd want to see a little bit more, because if they had a, a woman trans character who was closeted, you could do a really creative spin on the final girl theme in horror films. Like, just think of it. Here's this woman who, who is closeted right now, and everybody thinks is a guy, presents as a guy, but in their dreams, of course, they see themselves as a woman, um, and and the only way they can beat Freddy is by embracing their fears, saying, I am actually a woman, and embracing that. And that's, you know, that's how you beat Freddy. You face your fears. So the whole idea is the only way our, our hero character can save themselves is if they become the final girl and, and fight like a final girl. So it's like a transformation of a character. I, I know it's hard to explain, but I think it would be a cool idea. You have this character who's closeted, who everybody thinks is a guy, and embraces their, their female identity and becomes the final girl at the end of the movie, just almost out of the blue, and it's like, oh, they, they, they took a, a what I thought was a guy character who was actually a trans character, and they put on their head like that. It, it seems like a creative idea, so they should do that. Um, and they could have all kinds of things done with this concept if they really wanted to, and it's really just Freddy being Freddy. 
I guess I should also mention what would happen if an asexual character was in a Nightmare on Elm Street film and how Freddy would attack that since I've done a lot of asexual based videos and since I'm ace. But I'm not really sure how Freddy would tackle that. Um, yeah, there's, there's fears there that he could handle. Um, like a lot of asexuals, if they don't know their ace, they, they often feel confused or broken. And asexuality isn't that well known, so you could be that way for a long time, not knowing your orientation um, and being confused about yourself. But how do you film that? How do you translate that into a medium? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you just take a slice of cake and just jam it into the person's face and like, eat your cake! That actually seems like something that Freddie would do because if you, if you know the asexual community, we're obsessed with cake. I don't even know why, but we love cake. So he'd probably just take this cake, cut a slice, and just smash it into our face and make us eat it until we choke. <laughs> That's how probably he would kill me. <laughs> actually, that doesn't sound half bad. So I don't mind <laughs> being the next casualty in a Nightmare on Elm Street. Call my agent. Ah. Uh, Anyways, but yeah, I just want to state that I know Robert England has no power over Hollywood, but you guys should actually listen to him because if you guys just do Nightmare on Elm Street, the remake over again and make a really generic copy of the original over again with just even more jump scares, you're just going to annoy everybody. You have to do something very creative, very smart, very um, unique to get the fanboys hyped again. Um, and this is a very unique idea. Either do this or do something even more unique. Just do something creative and we will go see your movie. And I hope it does end up being a good movie. So once again, read the article, it's a good one. And those are my thoughts on what they should do. They should so do that idea.